My time at Chelsea. My work on my previous course, Fine Art at Chelsea, involved my interest in a mix of ideas around reality, synthesis, perception, symbols and technology. I began using 3D printing out of an interest in the material as a way to tap into some kind of future context that I felt the material was able to give me. My project towards the end of the second year was the first time I managed to kind of pull these things all together. The piece existed as a kind of body that represented for me a speculative future intelligence that reacted to viewers, used synthesis to explore the world and wished to investigate and know the people in the room. My time at CCI. Computational Futures and Artificial Intelligence. This module was interesting in the way it demystified some of the aspects of artificial intelligence, particularly the sometimes strange histories behind its development, such as the connections with ImageNet, the link to phrenology, and some of the practices of exaggerating its capabilities. I've been interested in the speed of tech and the idea that AI is built foundationally in our image before we really have a full grasp of our own intelligence, consciousness, and minds. So I liked having discussions about that in class. I enjoyed writing at length in a way that let me engage with the topic in connection to my fine art background and have a speculative approach to the ways in which it could develop for the better. Visual coding and physical computing. The physical computing aspect, especially working with Arduino, is something I enjoyed picking up and can definitely see myself bringing into my practice further as I move forwards. This module introduced a different kind of workflow to what I'm used to, a kind of convergence of your ideas, what the technology can do, and the experience and quality of using it or interacting with it. This kind of cyclical development where you balance practicalities and your intentions. Taking what we learn and then scaling it up into my own projects, I was impressed in the ability of a small component like a sensor to enable a work to engage with big ideas. I was able to make an instrument that had a real mood to it when used by a group, which got me thinking about that kind of quietness connected to religious buildings, that idea of ritual blended with the culture around electronic music. Creative coding and creative computing frameworks. This unit introduced a couple of things that I also picked up across the course. The first one being the strategy of engaging with something at a small scale to extrapolate and talk about much wider ideas. I struggled with this at first, but I came to recognise the power that can give to people to talk about world systems. Something I began to think more about was the idea of simulation as a strategy in making art and its wider place in the world of technology and engineering. The uncanny aspect of modelling the future based on simulation of data and the issues that can cause. I made some work exploring these ideas, viewing the world, specifically flowers, as things that can be changed, moved and viewed as a problem to be solved. After my BA, what do I want out of the next step? At this point, I know that I'd like to stay within the art world after I graduate. I plan to continue making and showing work myself, but I know I need to have jobs to support me as I do. The most important part for me was to find work that remains sociable, keeps me involved in talking with artists and people in the industry about works and ideas. I see myself as being good in a role in which that's a big focus. I think there's a chance that I end up going to do a post-grad fine art degree, but it's not something that I want to do right now. I know that I want to take the opportunity to continue working on my own practice and getting some experience in the industry and then choosing to do a post-grad when I know it will be beneficial for me rather than just rushing straight into it. I'm aware I'll end up having lots of jobs here and there for the foreseeable future, but I'm interested in participating in the art world, keeping on working and then moving into systems that support it. I want to focus on continuing my practice, maybe moving into doing curatorial work, working in galleries and working in education. This is a job role I was really excited to see listed recently for an artist and exhibitions assistant at Matt's Gallery in Nine Elms. I'd be interested in working behind the scenes and seeing that kind of the art world. The job consists of being the point of contact for the represented artists, which I think sounds really interesting, having that kind of regular communication with interesting people. Uh, admin and organisational work around the gallery, developing contacts with press and working with social media, working on sales of works, editions and publications, assisting at board meetings and exhibitions. Importantly, this role is also three days a week. Um, recently, the tutor Joel gave a talk and sort of recommended only taking a role that took up half your time. And I'm kind of interested in that idea especially early on in my career, as I want to be able to have the freedom to do other things and keep working myself. 
what skills they're looking for. Knowledge of the art world, um, gallery spaces and contemporary visual art. A proven track record of artist support slash admin, organizational skills, written communicational skills and IT. And then importantly, awareness and understanding of the UK public and private arts funding environment. So I'm kind of aware that that's a big area where I don't have any understanding or background. Um, I've sort of taken the time to dig through this archive, which the White Pube offers on its website of successful funding applications. And it's kind of still a mystery to me. Um, I can kind of pick up on the ways that people write in order to get these things and kind of the strategies they use. But realistically, I'm only going to get a handle on this through trying it out for myself and trying it out for different institutions. Um, this kind of role and many others require you to have already worked in a similar area prior, at least two years in this example, and ideally after a postgrad, which pushes the age you can reasonably hope to get the role into your late 20s at best. The first step that I think will help me pursue these directions is working as a graduate studio assistant at Chelsea once my degree is over. So I've known a few people that have gone through this scheme um, and it seems really interesting to me that they are kind of able to keep up their own practice and start to help out in an informal way within education. Um, importantly, this would role would give me a five days a week regular job, allowing me to stay in London, which is a huge thing. Similarly works as a way of seeing the other side of the art world, in this case education. Also get some experience working with students, giving advice and helping out in a more informal way. I see the GSA job as a way of testing out how working in education feels within that institution setting, as that's an area I could also see myself working. Uh, it was interesting on the course to kind of learn about the ethos of open source knowledge sharing within the digital creative communities. Some people that do similar kind of work in the art world are people like Hector Campbell, The White Pube, Seb's Art List, and at Spittle on Instagram. They all kind of do this job of demystifying the art world, broadcasting information about something that can be unclear or hard to find. I think I kind of see education in a similar way, um, helping students kind of navigate their way through the art world themselves. One of the most beneficial parts of art school for me has been the array of guest lecturers I've encountered who come in with unique perspectives. I'd like to contribute to that system within art education, guest lecturing, and then perhaps moving into more full-time roles. Importantly, I think, Hector Campbell and Gabriella de la Puente of the White Pube, whilst broadcasting information about the art world and being public-facing people, also were involved with setting up gallery spaces, collective ending HQ in Deptford, and output gallery in Liverpool. The importance of local, community-based galleries are going to be an important part of the next step of my practice, becoming the new supporting organisations after university. A lot of the younger professional artists I know are part of these community studios, meeting other artists in similar positions or having relationships with these kinds of galleries and regularly showing there. Something more long term down the line. I don't have any particular allegiance to UAL, but for the sake of ease, this is an example of a role that's available currently for a specialist technician at the CCW, so Chelsea Campbell Wimbledon Colleges. Um, I see this role as being a kind of full circle moment. Accidentally, I realised doing some research for this, I've picked some examples of jobs that act as a progression with the details in between less specific. I'm aware of a lack of certainty in what the next stages for me in terms of my practice look like, but the three examples of jobs uh, I've given act as milestones that point to me to certain points in my life. Looking at the kind of person they are interested in hiring, what I'm lacking is exactly the kind of work I already plan on doing in my early career. Upholding and developing a personal practice, developing my skills at making and research slash theory to a point I'm able to teach students and being involved in the industry. This role then is a chance to use what I've learned to help student artists and also an opportunity to become part of a network of practitioners, meeting new people, with long-term professional artistic practices informing my own.